<laughs> hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah is from uh, the Automator. And uh, I was working on, so I, actually Isaiah, why don't you go ahead and share your um, desktop there. The I was working on the, yeah, the, sure. our weekly newsletter and in it, at the bottom of it, I was trying to put a listing of people who had purchased multiple courses. Um, and by the yeah. way, if you're not a subscriber, I'll put the link somewhere up in here or, or look in the description if you want to subscribe to the newsletter. But here, this was a list yeah. of people in May who had purchased more than one course. I um, mean, some lady yeah. purchased all five of our courses, which was awesome. But um, yeah. notice here, you, you know, before there weren't as many and I just listed them in a row, but I'm like, you know what? That would be a really long, weird looking list. So let me put them in a table. The problem is um, if you use like any, you almost any sort of software, when you say create an HTML table, the amount of crap it puts in to that, html yeah. it's just ridiculous right it just so, adds a few it, well it adds a few things that you could later kind of like modify it allows right. you to be a little bit more flexible but sometimes you don't need all that you just want it to right show the people in that list right yeah and then once you switch over to the uh the tool so i wrote yes. this tool and because you know i i don't do a lot of guis right but in in here we're going to show you how to simply add a gui and that's what Isaiah yeah. is, is far better at me uh, at doing. Um, once you demonstrate here what it does, though, is, is you can, at, up top on lines four and five, you can say, how many columns do you want and how many rows do you want? Right. Um, so um, that's the only thing that you need to modify now. The... Zoom, in. zoom in so it's a little yes. easier for people to see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So now it is correct. We do have the column count, the row count. Um, very good use of variables there, you know, like, you know what is going on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but in general, what we're going to do is that all this code, instead of being run automatically when you, when you start, like when you start the script, we would add kind of like a little simple way to ask for the user. Yeah, just run it right now so they can see what it, what it creates. Yeah. So right now, if I go ahead and run this, I should get a message box, which is the line 18 here, that shows the HTML that was created by these two loops that you created here. So right. that's very good. It's very simple. Now, the only thing is that, okay, instead of just letting a person just have to open this manually and do that, why not just double clicking and showing kind of like a loop box in which you can select whatever you well, want now here's the thing so since i'm since it's being built for me right is i'll mm -hmm. tell you how i'm going to use it i'm going to use cool cactus pop-up when i'm doing this to say oh hey i need my html table so it's going to be called from another script so when it comes up yes. it should pop up with that gui automatically right and then and then yeah. say so yeah so in this case what i'm going to do i'm just going to create the, the gui directly in this file so let's just go ahead and use the gui command add and uh Let's add an edit control, and later on we will decide if that's exactly what we need. Yeah. There's I usually, no with controls, one of the quick things that I always keep in mind is having the width of the control. I, I try to not add controls with the default width because it allows me to position them in very specific things. You will see what I mean in a second. Now, the edit control is probably containing a default, probably, I don't know, a zero or 10, whatever you want for a default, but I'm gonna keep it empty. And I'm just gonna add a second one and I will just put them one next to the other. So I'm gonna grab the X axis plus 10, that would put it just right next to the other one, 10 pixels to the right. And we will need a button for this. So we add button and usually the default width for buttons, most, most GUIs have this particular size of 75 pixels, and that's uh, put it as create table. That's it. And, and wouldn't you typically throw in like a text box or something to tell what a text what they box? Are? Well, something to Later. say rows. So, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 right now. I will start with the GUI just to test it. Oh, okay. And later on, I would add labels and stuff. But yeah, it is it is correct. I would. Yeah, and this is what I wanted in this video later. was exactly how you normally do it. Because for those of us yes. that don't do them often, you know, like I I might be trying to do too much at one time, and and that's you know not the best approach. Exactly. So yeah, exactly. So right now, I will just start with the basics. Uh, 
<laughs> a return. <laughs> okay, so I just start with the basics. And uh, first of all, I like to always name my GUIs. They should have told me that. Especially, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it is very good to have that because later on you will need to refer to them. And if you don't have the name, it's going to be very annoying. So I create whatever I'm expecting first and no actions whatsoever. And then later on, then I would test what's going on. So right now I have two boxes. They're too big. The button is not where I need it. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. The widths are too big. Let's go ahead and make it 50 for now. And for you to put any element at the beginning of the, of the GUI, just usually add XM and that would bring the X axis to the margin. That's what it means for the button itself. So it brings the X to the margin and it should put it right next to where the other one, um, where the edit, the first edit control is. Now they look a little bit misaligned because the button control has a specific border that is a little bit different. So that makes it a little bit annoying. I usually remove one from those. Doesn't matter, it's just being a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. But usually you can start with this. Now, later on you would add other things, like for example, maybe the button is better to have it on the right, doesn't matter. The one point now is let's make sure that it performs the correct action. The reason why I selected edit boxes instead of um, other things is that if you have like these buttons up and down, Mm. It is really annoying to go one by one. So if you do use the up down controls, oh. right? Uh, uh, you can use them. Yeah, I, I would say in but this keep one the because, option to type in. Yeah, the, the right. odds are in this one, I'm not going to be doing more than you know a few. It probably wouldn't be as bad, but I, I know exactly what you mean. Like oh, I need fifty. Great, it's got to keep going. right. Yeah, you would have to click like fifty times. Yeah. yeah. But in general, I, I understand that whenever you're dealing with less than five, yeah, that's okay. And up and down control, that's perfectly fine. Now they are, um, the way how you create them here is using body controls. And we'll talk about that in another video. But in general, now that I have, I, I usually use, like edit controls because it allows me to write whatever I want. Sure. Right? So I could just have 115 and it would do it. But um, it's okay. Now in this case, I am rather partial to functions. So let's go ahead and uh, create, uh, say create. You could use this basically as a label, just like that, and with a return at the bottom, right? But I usually go with a function, right? And I already have that set up and I just have to move the, move the code inside the function. So either way, however you do it, uh, that's okay. Now, when I click create, I should automatically get, so I, I should get the values instead of having the values like this, I should get them from the controls. So now, now is the time that I assign uh, variables to the control. So I never do that like at the beginning. So now I say like um, uh, edit uh, row and edit uh, column, doesn't matter what it is. A little nice trick that you could use is to use GUI control, um, GUI control, uh, I think it is control get, yeah, GUI control get. And the funny thing about this is that, let me see, hold on, GUI control get, yes, exactly. So with GUI control get, you don't have to submit the window, okay? That is, uh, it, you know, that for you to get the information from the variables here, you would have to submit the window. And in the function, you would have to make those variables also global. I don't know if you have that information, but in general, if you use GUI control get, you don't have to submit the window and you also do not have to um, have global variables either. Because it, it goes and gets them, correct? That, at that it point. goes and gets them directly. Now, the other thing is, uh, usually if you see the parameters we control get, you have to put the control ID up here. You see that? And the output variable here. But if you just 
put that like that, just like that, it gets that control and puts it in that barrel. So it is kind of like a shorthand that you could do that. Yeah, and, and just so for people who are totally new to GUIs, up above, you have that G part in front of it, or sorry, v, the yes. V is the go-to, the V for the variable. Below, you, you, you remove that, and your first time doing it, it's like, okay, it's voodoo. Um, but it's, yeah, it's easy. <laughs> it is true. It is true. Yeah. So basically, whenever we add an edit uh, control, any control, and you use the V in front of a name, it is declaring a variable. That's what is happening. Now, when you are working with the variable later on, wherever you are, you do not have to specify that V. That V, the context of it is only in the GUI add command. Outside of it, you don't need it. The same with the G, which actually told, talks it's, about a go sub notification label, but yeah. Do you happen to know, is that pretty common in other languages as well, that kind of approach? Oh, okay. No, 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 no. That is completely related to our hotkey, yeah. So now that I have the variables, let's go ahead and just use them, right? That should yeah, already- Change everything work. else. Yeah. Yes. So what we're going to do before we test, let's go ahead and break our script right about here. So let's go ahead and break it right about here so that we could take my, a look my at... My breaks so if I, enough, I don't need to add breaks to it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In this context, what it would, it would mean is that I would just put whatever number I want. When I click create table, what I'm expecting the script to do is, uh, well, VS Code at least, is to pause right here and allow me to see the variables. See. Yeah. So now... The script is paused, and now I could just go ahead and verify that I am getting co the correct information. And uh, let's just go ahead and continue the script. I should get my table. Now let's go ahead and change that to five by five. Create a table. And now this should say, well, I could see it here on the left as well, five by five. Mm -hmm. Now the reason why I am, par I am partial to uh, functions instead of uh, labels is because if you have this in a label, you would have to search those variables with all the global variables of the script. So that would be a huge list. You have to scroll to find them. But when you have a, a function, the local functions are shown instead. So I don't have to scroll that much. If the information is right there. I just see them. Cool. Everything is good. I just go ahead and click and everything is working perfectly fine. Right now, if you just go ahead and do what you were doing, like three by two, uh, so, now we just need the, the um, uh, how do I say this, the labels for them, because right now I was gonna say like, which is the row? Right. But yeah, so you have like uh, five rows, three columns, you create your table, and that should, should have given you exactly the same that you used in the, in the um, well, I didn't count it, but it was something, one, two, three, four, well, five, do, six, do seven, a two by two. seven by three, right? So, I, I, well, yes, yeah, so it was. Yeah, because I had 20. Seven by three, right? Yeah. Yeah, so basically, if you select here seven by three, you should get exactly the same. Um, let me stop having the break here. Um, so now that should have been exactly the same table you got before. So again, this is extremely easy. That was very simple. Now, uh, the reason why I didn't want to GUI submit it's because I want to do probably several in a row. I could see that, oh, I don't like it. Let me change it and let me just do it again. You see that? Now, if you submit the window, you would have to show it again. But in any case, that's the reason why I chose that approach. Uh, let's just now finish, uh, give the finishing touches. So right now, I just create a GUI, um, uh, add text, and in this case, the text, and this is again, it's very important for you to add the widths because later on in certain situations, you want the widths of the controls to be, um, you want to control them to be able to position them correctly. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the correct, if you don't have the width, if they change, they vary according to the contents oh, of okay. it, then right. your GUI is not gonna be, you're not gonna be able to actually center stuff or put them in a grid exactly how you expect. That's what happens. So I, I encourage you to always go ahead and have a specific size uh, that you want to start with. Take a look at the, at the 
whatever you want. So rows and duplicate that line and now put here, uh, um, this one will be columns, right? Now, as soon as I put this, remember, if you do not specify an X and Y location on the next control, they're gonna be positioned below, okay? So sometimes that's not what you want, right? okay? Because in this case, look at that, I just put an X plus 10. So that would be on the side. If you, uh, let me show you what it looks like. So you would have this mess right here, right? It's perfect. I love so it. One of, <laughs> yeah. So one of them is below. Yeah. And the other one is 10 pixels to the right. Now, remember that this text is 100 pixels wide. Uh -huh. You're not looking, you're not seeing it. But what happens is if I add a border to it, so if I add a border, you would see exactly what is going on. So when you do that, so now that text yeah, has a border, awesome. and then I put a yeah. 10 bucks, right? That, yeah. That's one of the things that I play with all the time. But the funny thing is that if I have the same width for all my texts, I could actually line them up. Well, in, or in the, in the even the though line. it kind of goes against convention, but when I do this, when I'm sharing date numbers, off to, you know, like when I'm doing an email, or whatever, I put the numbers first because their widths are very constant and the words vary a lot. So when I put the words on the right, I don't have to worry so much about yeah. the, the thing you're having here, right? But, um, but this would fix the issue. Uh, so, so let me demonstrate exactly what you just mentioned. So let's say, for example, that I'm going to put each of the edit controls right next to the, so you see X plus 10 puts it right next to the previous control. And let's just remove the width. What is going to happen here is that one of them, let me put the other border as well so you can see what is going on. So what is gonna happen is one of them is gonna be in one position and the other is gonna be in a different position. You will see. So uh, let me put the column here. Let me start it up at the margin with XM, right? So now they both start at the margin, but the edit controls are not lined up. The reason for it is that one of the controls has less letters than the other which is what I was talking about. So if you get into the habit of always kind of like managing the width of your text all the time, like you always set it up. I mean, you know, that's not what I was saying, right? Oh, so, I'm sorry. So put your, put your edit fields first and then the text on the right. Yeah, so, so, so I, I understand that that's the solution to the problem. That's what you oh. said. You mentioned first the solution, right? You were saying like, I usually put oh, the, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the control first yeah. to avoid this issue. And I was just saying like, let me just show you yeah, what right. it looks like. I thought like, you right? were saying that's what I was you know, suggesting. No, 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 not the suggestion, but basically like that the, was your the, solution the to the point problem, about right? The issue. Right, yeah. Yeah, so, but right now look at it. Now I have the same result which is everything lined up. The only thing is that I'm managing the width of yeah, the text. Right. Yeah, it's, always it's, the I've same. I've done that. It's very annoying right. to try to get them yes. to look nice. Yeah. Right. It is it's very changed. annoying. But if you get into the habit of it, like I just do it without thinking and now everything looks always the same. The reason why I put it like this, and this is funny, is because I usually put the labels to the left. So I, I make them left aligned. So you would see like this, and that creates this, oh, hold on. Uh, right, don't you? Sorry, yeah, it's right aligned, sorry. <laughs> so right now they, they act as labels to whatever I have on the other side. It, it's just like some people like it like that, I don't, it doesn't matter yeah, it doesn't right matter. now. It's just talking about how it, yeah. In general, you can play with this. You could put either the controls first, the edit control first, the text first, however you want, that doesn't matter. The point is that now you have your labels, you know what they are and you can just click a button and it would do whatever you want. In, in Usually, like, um, mm -hmm. this example is just something so simple for me to use, right? Like it's like, you know, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. Usually what I do so that things look a little bit nicer is also use a lot of the X uh, pen for the text. That creates kind of like a line. 
So you will see it right there. You cannot see it, but let me add a width to it of, say, for example, 150. Let's try that. You will see a line now. You see that line? Mm -hmm. That division is something that I always use when I have to kind of like show my uh, information in one side, and then I want to divide the buttons yep. from the information that I want. So those are just as aesthetics, stuff that you can do in general. Um, the only thing with the text like this is that as soon as you put that, uh, I would suggest you to have the GUI width always with you. So mm -hmm. if you don't use this, if you don't use the, I'm sorry, the text divider, the GUI is shown automatically. It's, it's kind of like size automatically. But when you use the divider, it's, it's not going to work out as intended. So oh, again, okay. those are the little details, right? So it, it is always going to push a little bit to the side because of the divider. Um, but basically, there it is. That's something simple, how to convert one little script into kind of like a small GUI to add information and just go ahead and play with it. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you.